Dave Mustaine is one of the best metal guitarists of all time. With a career spanning several decades, he's already made his mark in the world of metal. Both as a guitarist and frontman of one of the big four metal bands, the iconic Megadeth. While Dave's contributions to the genre are unquestionable, many moments of feud, turmoil, and conflict shaped the narrative of his musical journey. Like many other legendary figures in the music industry, Dave wasn't exempt from criticism and scrutiny from musicians from other bands, especially because of his attitude and persona behind and even in front of these scenes. In this video, we'll uncover more about the legendary guitarist through his feud and conflicts with members of other bands. Suicide Silence In Megadeth's 2009 headlining tour, things didn't turn out completely friendly between the bands involved. No one really knew what transpired, but in December of 2009, Suicide Silence, one of the opening bands for Megadeth's headlining tour, made a sudden announcement. Apparently, Dave created a feud between him and the band when he booted them from the final show in Reno, Nevada. According to Suicide Silence, they were not allowed to play Reno due to Dave Mustaine's ego. They were kicked off the last two days of the tour and had their laminates removed. Dave Mustaine kicked us off the Megadeth tour because he wanted to take our laminates for a little incident weeks ago, so we told him to F off. This was everything that Suicide Silence drummer Alex Lopez had to say about the situation. However, it was later confirmed by late Suicide frontman Mitch Lucker that the band was sneaking in more guests than they were allowed, and that Dave thought it'd be a risk to his dressing room. Dissection Suicide Silence wasn't the only band that Dave Mustaine kicked off the tour. In 2005, fans were shocked upon learning that the satanic metal band Dissection was dropped from the Metalist Festival in Israel. In a statement, the band said, I unfortunately have to inform you about the fact that Dissection has been canceled from the Metalist Festival in Israel, a gig which was 100% confirmed, obviously as a result of Mr. Dave Mustaine of Megadeth, who were headlining the festival not wanting to play with satanic bands, according to himself because of his newfound Christian beliefs. Dave, a born-again Christian, insisted to the promoters that he wouldn't perform in the festival if Dissection was on the lineup. In an interview, Dave recalled the incident saying, I told the promoter, I said, look, we can't play. We're not going to play that festival. I never said kick him off. That was the promoter's mistake. The promoter kicked him off. It's hard enough as it is in music to get concerts, so I'd never kick a band off one of my shows. I'd rather me not do it. And when I said, look, we don't want to do it, they unfortunately harmed that band. This wasn't the only time Dave allegedly kicked out a band from a lineup due to his religious beliefs, as he had done the same to the black metal band Rotting Christ. Mike Muir of Suicidal Tendencies One of the most famous feuds that Dave Mustaine's gotten himself in other than Metallica, of course, is with Mike Muir of Suicidal Tendencies. This feud between the two almost ended up in a fistfight right on stage. At the Clash of the Titans tour in 1990, Dave allegedly tried to throw Suicidal Tendencies off the bill, which greatly upset frontman Mike Muir. Mike responded to what Dave did by attacking his alcohol addictions. The feud reached its climax when it nearly became violent when Mike challenged Dave to an onstage fistfight. According to Mike, there are a lot of people who'd like to see Dave get his butt kicked, and the Lord knows Mike Muir ain't going down. However, when things escalated, Dave convinced Mike that if he wanted to fight, they should fight after the tour like gentlemen. Fortunately for Dave, Mike listened and got out of the altercation. Dave said Mike was a big guy and he probably would have stamped me pretty good. In the book, Louder Than Hell, Dave recounted the incident, saying that the whole feud started because Mike Muir was a no-show during the promotional photo shoot of the event, which offended him. From there, Dave told the press that suicidal tendencies were unprofessional and undeserving of their spot in the lineup. Chuck Billy of Testament When Testament had their first ever U.S. arena tour, they did what any band would do. They spent on their stage production. The tour was an excellent opportunity for them, so they knew that splurging on things to make their show more memorable was the right move. However, things didn't go the way they planned, all because of one person. Yeah, Dave Mustaine. When Chuck Billy, Testament's vocalist, recalled that tour, he said they bought two new scrims, full-on backline, the whole deal. Nice looking show. Sadly, they were surprised because we get the first show and Dave Mustaine sees us have it up and he says we can't use it. We had a little problem in the first week of the tour. Anyone who spent a fortune to improve the visuals for their shows will not be pleased upon knowing that they can't use all of it. So naturally, Chuck was pissed. He said, we spent all this money, and those were the days when they were hand-painted backdrops. These backdrops were 15, 20 grand. They weren't cheap back then. But Dave threw his weight around and said we can't use all of our new stuff, so for the first week, we were like tails between our legs playing. What Chuck did, upon the insistence of his bandmates, was to reach out to Rob Halford of Judas Priest. 
Rob had no idea about the situation, so he asked the tour manager, and he too had no idea. Dave made it purely his decision not to let Testament use the things for their production. Chuck said that when he told Rob, Rob told them to go up there and use all their equipment. Recalling that night they finally used everything they bought, Chuck said, and who comes side stage to watch the show? There goes Mr. Mustaine. Mr. Mustaine is just standing there, just pissed off. He just had that look. Carrie King of Slayer. It's no secret that a lot of fellow musicians can't stand Dave. Carrie King of Slayer was one who had the opportunity to work with Dave, but it didn't quite end up positively. In 1984, Carrie joined Megadeth as a rhythm guitarist. However, after only five shows together, Carrie got fed up with Dave and left the band. According to King, he doesn't know how anyone could stand Dave for more than a couple hours because he's crazy. The incident turned into a long-standing feud, but the two were still able to work with each other, even touring together in 2010. Nowadays, neither side really cares anymore, but they didn't really make up. Aerosmith In 1993, Megadeth was supposed to be part of a 25-day tour with Aerosmith. However, Megadeth didn't even get to half of those shows when they were abruptly fired from the tour. According to Megadeth bassist Dave Ellefson in this autobiography, the tour with Aerosmith was already rocky from the start. It was only two shows into the tour when Dave expressed that he was unhappy with how things were produced. Megadeth wasn't getting enough space on stage or a sound check, which really disappointed the band. However, according to Dave's book, Rust in Peace, he struggled with addiction during that time. They only went on tour with Aerosmith because the band's handlers thought it would keep Dave sober. Both Dave and David talked to Steven Tyler about their issues on the tour, saying that they weren't just some unknown group. That's where Aerosmith frontman Steven talked to them to smooth things over and even offered to help them with their addiction. But now it's However, Dave wasn't satisfied. The assurance given to him weren't delivered, so he became more frustrated. Everything came to a head when Dave expressed his dismay during a show in Houston. He had an angry attitude throughout the show, prompting Aerosmith to allegedly fire the band seven dates into the tour. Megadeth's label Capitol Records issued a statement at the time, claiming that the band quit the tour over artistic restrictions. This event was another missed opportunity for the band. Ultimately, it opened Dave's eyes to the fact that his addictions were getting in the way. In an interview he said about Aerosmith, I wanted my life to be better, and I saw that theirs was because they'd gotten sober. So yeah, we were probably a little snotty. It's clear that Dave Mustaine has talent that brought him to the top. He's a legend in his own right, creating his own influence in the heavy metal scene. However, his conflicts and feuds with fellow musicians show another side of him. Although these may seem like problematic events, they played a big role in where Dave's at in his life. Whatever you think of the icon Dave Mustaine, he's here to stay with more music and vibrant stories.